Hi everyone and apologies again for not being there today. Uh, I have an appointment so I can't be there but hopefully you guys will be absolutely fine. I assume by now you have had a conversation in your campfire rooms we, about chapter four and kind of compared your quotes etc. So we're building on that and we're going to move into chapter five and I'm just going to do kind of the greatest hits of chapter five if you like. So just to recap from chapter four just to create the segue for you. Um, Bernard and Lenina agree that they will uh, go to the reservation together. They've had that conversation and Lenina uh, departs on an evening or a date night with Henry Foster, right? That's kind of where we left off it. Bernard then had some problems with one of the Deltas who was not being, uh, who's not respecting him because he didn't look like a proper alpha, right? Which is a pretty significant thing for him. And then we have him flying off to pick up, pick up Helmholtz Watson at his place of residence and they are heading off. And as they fly off in the helicopter, Helmholtz reflects on how he you know, wants to pursue writing even further and how he's kind of frustrated by the fact that there is not enough inspiration in this perfect world. There's not enough to write about which is obviously Huxley telling us something about the need for writers to feel that there's some sort of miss um, injustice or something that they need to repair as they write, right? So if we move then into chapter five, it picks up on those two scenes. So Bernard has just dropped off Helmholtz and he's going somewhere else and Lenina and Henry are on their date. So there are two parts that we'll explore a bit further today. Um, so thematically, if we start with that, it uh, explores the central themes of community, uh, interdependency, mortality, and I guess equality. Uh, it furthers the idea that the community and how the individuals in the world state work towards a common goal and improving society uh, is, is a central element and that they're kind of interdependent on one another. And Alpha is not going to be successful without the Epsilons there to support and vice versa. So they're kind of showing that interdependence. It also explores human mortality and how death is an equalizing force and how in this society we are all a cog in the wheel. We're all interdependent, we're all needed, uh, and we're all contributing. And after death, we are all the same, right? So we all contribute the same amount of phosphorus in this case to um, creation and to fertilizer, etc. Uh, once we are dead. <coughs> so consequently, the structures, the hierarchical structures that people have put in place are really irrelevant in, in the bigger scheme of thing, things, I should say. Uh, so I want to deviate slightly here and just kind of connect this chapter to Shakespeare, actually, uh, because we'll see later on as we go into the book how much Huxley values Shakespeare and how he kind of portrays Shakespeare as central in many things in terms of philosophy and understanding the human being. And this scene kind of echoes greatly uh, one or two scenes really in Hamlet uh, towards the end of Hamlet from Act, Act 4 when Hamlet has a conversation with Claudius the King uh, and also when he talks to the gravediggers in Act 5. In both those cases Hamlet's kind of reflecting on the fact that humans really are nothing but food for maggots. That we feed ourselves to eventually die and become food for maggots and how uh, when we become maggots a fisherman might put uh, a maggot on their hook can find a fish and then eat the fish. That could be a beggar eating a fish that has previously, uh, that maggot has previously eaten a decomposing king. And therefore how a king might go through the, uh, the uh, guts of a beggar. So Hamlet's kind of using that to illustrate that, that it doesn't really matter if you're a king or you're a beggar, uh, everyone's kind of uh, dependent or connected to everyone else. And, and Huxley kind of connects back to that theme. It's not as explicit here as we'll get other references. Obviously the title of Brave New World is uh, a direct quote from Shakespeare's The Tempest and we'll see much more of The Tempest or and other plays as we move into uh, the later chapters. Cool, so they're the central themes. Uh, so if we then look at uh, chapter... So I lost track now. Chapter 5 is divided into two parts. The first part is Lenina and Henry's date night. Uh, their date consists of them playing obstacle golf. They've just finished obstacle golf. They're coming home, they're flying home, and they fly over the central crematorium in London. And that's where we get these scenes about mortality uh, kind of developed, where, where we 
uh, get to explore the phosphorus recovery. So if you see that quote on the slide, <clears throat> phosphorus recovery, explained Henry telegraphically, on their way up the chimney, the gases go through four separate treatments. P205 used to write out of circulation every time they cremated someone new, someone. Uh, and now they recover over 98% of it, more than a kilo and a half per adult corpse, which makes the best part of 400 tons of phosphorus every year from England alone. Henry spoke with a happy pride, rejoicing wholeheartedly in the achievement, as though it had been his own. Fine to think we can go on being socially useful even after we're dead, making plants grow. Right, so it's a very morbid thought, but it, it really highlights the philosophy of the world state, right? That people as individuals are not valued. No one cares for anyone else in terms of, you know, we don't go on missing them. There's no grieving, anything like that. It's just, hey, let's make you more useful for society in a very crass way. Uh, so then we, we leave, they fly over that, and then they fly off uh, and they have a nice dinner with some so We're going to look at a couple of quotes on the next slide as well, but continuing their date, they have some dinner with Soma as kind of dessert, and then they go to a concert and a dance with Calvin uh, and his 16 saxophonists, uh, and then more Soma is consumed, and they kind of stumble home in this drugged state, uh, but even... Despite that, Lena remembers to take all the contraceptive measures before they tumble into bed, uh, showing us that her conditioning clearly goes beyond the rational and kind of the logical level, and she uh, doesn't forget it, even though she's highly uh, intoxicated on Soma. Let's just look at two more quotes. Is that slide going to change? Oh, yes. There, there. So, um, no. Oh yeah, sorry, this new slide, sorry, I couldn't see the new quote down there. So, whoop, there we go, struggling here. Fine, she agreed, but queer that alphas and betas won't make any more plants grow than those nasty little gammas, deltas and epsilons down there. All men are physically, physiochemically equal, said Henry sententiously. Besides, even epsilons perform indispensable services. All right, so he is really highlighting this idea of, of equality. Uh, between the cast and how everyone is interdependent and no one is more important than anyone else. And then that kind of triggers in Lenina this memory of uh, from her past, from her conditioning. Even an Epsilon, Lenina suddenly remembered an occasion when, as a little girl at school, she had woken up in the middle of the night and become aware for the first time of the whispering that had haunted all her sleeps. That's the sleep teaching, right? She saw again the beam of moonlight, the row of small white beds, and heard once more the soft, soft voice that said, the words were there, unforgotten, unforgettable, after so many night-long repetitions. Everyone work for everyone else. We can't do without anyone. Even epsilons are useful. We couldn't do it without epsilons. Everyone works for everyone else. We can't do without anyone. Lenin I remembered her first shock of fear and surprise, her speculations through half a wakeful hour, and then... Under the influence of those endless repetitions, the gradual soothing of her mind, the soothing, the sooth smoothing, the stealthy creeping of sleep. I suppose epsilons don't really mind being epsilons, she said aloud. So there's that realization as well that Lenin kind of connects that, okay, yeah, it is important that we have this. So that's the kind of the end of part one. As they stumble into bed, we leave uh, them together. Uh, and we cut across to Bernard, who has just left uh, his dinner with Helmholtz, and he's going straight off to his solidarity service. Uh, at the solidarity service, they form a circle. Twelve people are in the room. They form a circle. Uh, so six men, six women, they sit. Uh, so woman, man, woman, man, woman, man, in a circle. Uh, and they all have this bowl of Soma spiked ice cream that they have a spoon spoonful and then pass that along. So gradually they move into... Uh, obviously a, a soma intoxication and then they start singing songs which kind of takes them into this trance-like state uh, and eventually results in what they call an orgy porgy uh, to give them a sense of community so they come together and they share their bodies with one another uh, as Bernard, Bernard struggles to kind of fit into this right he, he obviously struggles in, in most uh, social situations but in this in this uh, he doesn't really join in wholeheartedly in the solidarity service and he certainly doesn't feel like the orgy is really 
he can't really focus on, on any kind of pleasure in that. Instead, he's focusing on the unibrow of the girl sitting next to him. But I thought we would share just one, a few verses from one of the songs that they're singing so you get a sense of how that community service um, or solidarity service operates. <clears throat> so the song they're singing there is, Ford, we are twelve, oh, make us one, like drops within the social river. Oh, make us now together run as swiftly as thy shining fliver. No idea what that is. Come, great being, social friend, annihilating twelve in one. We long to die, for when we end, our larger life has but begun. Because they'll come back as plants or something, right? Feel how the greater being comes, rejoice, and in rejoicings die. Melt in the music of the drums, for I am you, and you are I. Um, and then there's, it goes into the whole orgy porgy stuff and in the next few verses. Um, but that's, so it's kind of highlighting the same themes as we had in part one, right? that humans are um, interdependent, we're connected, we all depend on one another, and also this idea that we um, are useful to society, uh, even in our afterlife, if you like. Cool, I think they're the central idea. So now that you've finished this chapter, if you've got any questions, obviously, uh, or enter a comment or a question in this assignment, if you've got them, uh, and then click Submit so that you're done with this particular summary assignment. And then you move on to chapter six. Chapter six has three parts to it. There's Bernard and Lenina's first date, which is kind of uh, a lead up, I guess, to the trip to the res reservation. And then when they come back the next day, Bernard goes and asks permission from the uh, director to travel to the reservation in New Mexico. And then in the part three of that chapter, they actually commence their travel to the reservation. And we get a sense of what's there. But the next couple of chapters are going to be more focused on the events at the reservation. Uh, so take your time, read through that chapter and annotate it. Um, and particularly focus on how this chapter contrasts to the ideas in chapter 5. Uh, look for instance at how Henry's and Lenina's date over uh, flying over and they kind of marvel at all the the scenery of London and how great the whole machinery is and how wow, how efficient the phosphorus, uh, the extraction of phosphorus is from the factories. Compare that to uh, what Bernard does with Lenin when they fly in their helicopter together. Uh, if you have any other questions, obviously post those on, as I said, in the assignment, or if you want to email me, we can do that as well. Uh, reminder that at the end of school today is the end of the grading period. So if you've got anything that you need to get done, office hours today, I'm not going to be there, but you can use that time to get anything finished. And then hopefully everything is up to date by Monday. So I graded and entered by Monday when I put the grades in. Lovely. Have a good weekend and I'll see you all again on Tuesday. Take care.